Hey guys, Chibu B here. We've got some very interesting reveals today, the first of which is the return of League Cups and Challenges. So if you've been wanting to get into the game on a more competitive level, but don't want to have to travel around the country to do it, you don't have to anymore because local card shops will be able to have League Cups and League Challenges. League Challenges are more so like a monthly thing, so you can get some points to go to Worlds Worlds, and then League Cups are like a step above that, a little bit higher tier, more competitive guys will come out for it, but it's just a great entry point that if you're wanting to take the game a bit more seriously, this is the way to do it without having to break the bank. Also really cool that you do get promos with them as well as typically play mats. If you get, I think it's first place, might be top four or so, but that's something that we'll have to do a little bit more digging into. This isn't really something I've participated in much because I kind of got into the game during COVID a bit more seriously and we haven't really had them since then. So it's really cool we are getting it. Definitely something that caught me by surprise since they lowered the amount of points you needed to get into Worlds. So it seemed like they were doing that because there wasn't local events, but now they're bringing back local events. Interesting, but it's definitely going to give a lot more people, um, I think that little nudge to take the game a bit more seriously in their push towards Worlds. Are you going to be going to Cups and Challenges? Are you making a push for Worlds? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear how you guys play the game. Is it a more competitive thing or just for fun? The other interesting reveals we got is Cooper Raja EX. Definitely not a card I thought we'd be getting. And um, sticking to the typical steel thing, though, of hey, it takes 30 less damage from attacks. That's neat. It's got 300 HP, so it's pretty bulky. And it's on a stage one. So we're seeing stage two with, with that kind of HP, not really stage one. But with it being a steel type, it does make sense. Its attack is called Nosequake. I love it. It's epic. It's going to do 260 damage for two metal and a colorless energy. And it does do 30 damage to each of your bench Pokemon, though. It's kind of the trade off, but we have ways to heal. You can use Picnic Basket, you can use Radiant Serena, so it should be fine. Also, interesting the ability Bronze Body says it takes 30 less damage from attacks. So it'll be interesting to see if that means you have Cooperages on the bench. Are they not taking 30 damage from? The recoil damage from this attack or does it just mean when it's in the active spot it'll be interesting to see the final translation on that one the other reveals we got we did get a wingle and pelipper do they have wings of union they do not they don't it would have been really cool if we got a water type pelipper that had wings of union we didn't unfortunately or keep this guy normal and then make that flamigo fighting type because then you have four attackers with that attack, and it becomes a little interesting arch type. Unfortunate it didn't head that direction, but I still have hope we'll get another Wings of Union attacker. Sorry, I scrolled a little bit too quickly there. So Pelipper, though, colorless, 120 HP, and it does have a pretty cool ability, though, in Wind Letter. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve, you can search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, put it into your hand, or you can put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. So it's a great way to just kind of get a nice pivot. It's like a Luminion V, but not a V. You do have to evolve into it. Or it's like a VS Seeker, but a Pokemon instead of an item. So it's a nice pivot instead of like that Altaria we have where you can repeatedly use it, put a supporter card on the top of your deck. It's not quite that powerful, but just being able to immediately get it, especially since we don't have a Ranguru to just grab that top card off your deck, it's pretty solid. And getting something back from the discard, like if you just have a Wingle sitting on your bench and your opponent knows you need a boss for game, Maybe they're going to boss up that Wingle instead, and you're making them a little bit nervous. It's pretty cool. So the other things we're getting, we are getting a Luxray line as well as Tinkaton EX. So the Luxray line, Shinx, 30 damage, flip a coin, if tails, nothing, not great. Falls into Luxio, 30 damage, one energy, don't flip a coin. Oh, okay, it's a card, and then it evolves into Luxray though, which is the very interesting one. And those pre-evolutions didn't seem very exciting, so don't worry about them, because its ability, Overflowing Ray, once during your turn, if this is in your hand and you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, don't even worry about those pre-evolutions. Just put this right onto your bench. Its attack, Wild Bolt, for a Lightning and Double Colorless, is going to do 180 damage, but does 20 damage to itself. So a bit of a trade-off. Kind of a pricey attack, but we're getting a new energy card that we'll get to in a moment that can help you out with this and does combo very nicely with the ability that this has. The Tinkaton line, though, we're getting two copies of Tinkatink. One has Iron Scrap. You get to put an item card from your discard pile into your hand. Kind of solid. And if control decks make a comeback, maybe this will see play in those. The other Tinkatink we're getting has Smithereen Smash. 10 damage, flip a coin. If heads, discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. So, like, an attack version of Crushing Hammer. That's kind of frustrating. And then it does evolve into Tinkatuff. Has Play Rough. 
Double colorless, 30 damage, flip a coin, 30 more if it's heads. All right, <laughs> pulverizing press, 60 damage. This is tax damage isn't affected by any effects. Again, nothing too exciting, but the Tinkaton EX is the really interesting one we're getting here, and I know a lot of people will be excited for this card. Definitely seems to be a fan favorite Pokemon so far. So it's attack Humongous Hammer for double colorless energy. Does 30 damage times the number of cards in your hand. So effectively, if you have 10 cards, 300 damage for double colorless energy, you can be playing that with double turbo energy, bumps that down to 280, but you are one-shotting V-Stars in that range. If you have 11 cards with a double turbo energy, that's 310, you're taking out Mu V-Maxes. Getting to 11 cards can be a little bit tricky, but we do have a Milotic that makes it so that your opponent can't play Disruption cards against you. Your hand's essentially just safe. They play a Roxanne, or when this comes out, Iono, you're not going to have to shuffle your hand into your deck. You can just continue to build up your hand. Running this with things like Curlia, where you're discarding a card, drawing two cards. You could be charging this up then with Gardevoir EX, maybe. Or just drawing straight drawing cards with something like Zinnia's Resolve, where you ditch two cards, draw as many cards as your opponent has Pokemon in play. They've got a full bench up against something like Ospox or Maridon, where they're filling up their bench consistently. You can just be straight drawing six. It's pretty solid. Its second attack, Pulverizing Press, for one Psychic and double colorless, is just going to do 140 damage. It's not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon, though. So maybe you're up against, like, Gudra. You don't have that many cards in hand to justify the damage output. You have enough energy to use this attack, just shred right through it. It's pretty cool that it has a secondary attack with that type of effect. Shred effects are very powerful. 140 also, not a bad number to be able to hit. You're half hitting V-Stars. And even going into EXs, if you're able to scale damage up with some tool cards, it's a great option to be able to have. We're also going to be getting some Mankey and Primeape and the Annihilate EX. We've already seen this revealed, so I'm not really going to read into it too much. Angry Grudge, though, you can put up to 12 damage counters on this Pokemon, and it's going to do 20 damage for each damage counter you do. So 240. Since it's fighting, you can play Grant, bump it up to 270. Choice belts and stuff like that to scale that damage up a little bit further. Definitely an interesting guy to be able to play around with, but being a stage 2, not too sure how much play it's realistically going to see. Getting an item card in Delivery Drone as well, it's sort of like that item card we saw previously, Old Computer. You've got to flip two coins, if both of them are heads, search your deck for any card and put it into your hand. I think Old Computer was discard, put it into your hand. It's fine. Is it going to see play? Probably not. The other one didn't, but it's a card. And the other one we're getting is Motivational Lemonade. I don't like that. A little bit of a Mike's Hard card. <laughs> you can use this card only if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. So it's interesting that they're kind of playing around with that mechanic. We're seeing it in Luxray, we're seeing it in this, and we're seeing it in this energy card we're going to get to in just a moment. You're going to be able to heal 60 damage from one of your Pokemon. So it's an interesting concept to be able to play around with. We did lose Hyper Potion, so having this as a substitute in is kind of nice. The... Kind of star of the show here though is reversal energy very excited about this card while it's attached to a pokemon it provides a colorless energy not very exciting but if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent and it's attached to an evolution pokemon that doesn't have a rule box like luxray it provides three energy of any type instead so you can be attaching this to luxray you can be benching luxray if you're behind on prizes and just start swinging with a single prize pokemon out of nowhere it's a very interesting concept to be able to play around with, and I'm excited to see where they go with this mechanic, because we're getting quite a few cards that are kind of playing with this comeback idea. So um, I'm liking it. It makes it so it's not just a, oh, someone starts off the game, they snowball, that's it. When we have cards like this and Iono that give it a little bit of pressure for a back and forth in the game, it's very healthy for the game. Parsing the Wu Chen, we've seen it already, but we're seeing the alt art of it, which is pretty cool. Same with the Chu Yu EX. The Chin Pao EX and the Ting Lu EX. If you want a better look at those artworks, I'll have a link to this article in the comments down below. They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. I'll probably just get the basics. I'm not big on going for the alt arts. More so just need it for the card to be able to play the card. But if that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments down below. And what's your favorite alt art card? I know I was a big fan of the alt art EVs we got in Evolving Skies. That's kind of the one card that I will do a little bit of collecting for. Other than that, though, I usually just go for the basic arts. Don't, don't get your uh, pitchforks and torches out. <laughs> and I think that's about it for this article. Yeah, that's it. So what's your thoughts on these reveals we got today? Some very interesting stuff. New cards. Events are coming back. 
definitely a great time to be getting into the game and if you're playing the game online as well on ptcgl we just got the new battle passes and there's some very interesting stuff on there if you haven't seen that yet already there'll be a video popping up right now that'll take you through that till next time though take care of yourself